Welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to learn about how to create a DSCP server on a Cisco switch. So basically to understand the DSCP first uh, as you can see in the picture I did uh, pull up uh, from Google a picture uh, that shows how DSCP works. So basically uh, this is what we call a DORA process and DORA they call it DORA because it stands for uh, four steps of DSCP which stands for discover, offer, request and acknowledgement so basically d for d o for o r for r and the a for a that's why we call it a dora process so basically what happened in this process is that the the, that the client it sends the discovery uh discovery broadcast that's super important to, to understand so this is a broadcast broadcast discovery to the dcp server so basically this 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 uh uh client is hooked up on the switch somewhere in, in your network and basically what's going to happen is this switch needs to belong on on uh, within the range meaning when it says within the range it can be on the, on the VLAN 1 network range it could be VLAN 20, VLAN 10, whatever VLAN number you have it. In my case here I do have a VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 and that's what we're going to create a DSCP server for. So basically uh, client sends the discover broadcast to the DSCP server and basically the DSCP server it can be inside the switch itself in my case that we're going to create it right now it can be in a cloud it can be in <clears throat> within the network it can be in a different uh, range of network and stuff like that so uh, client sends the discover broadcast to the DSCP server so it discover the DSCP server the DSCP, DSCP server what it does is it sends an offer within the range so basically, if it sees that this uh, client, uh, we have a DSCP server for that particular range, then it's going to, and, and, and also it's super important, if we have an available IP address in, uh, within that range, then what DSCP server does, it sends an offer to the client, in which in, in this case, it can be a PC, it can be a laptop, it can be any endpoint devices, which is a phone, tablet, uh, TV, whatever it is. As, as long as they support an IPv4, IPv6, IP addressing protocol, it can be any of, uh, uh, of that devices. Then what happens is once the DCP server sends the offer to the client, then the client requests that IP address. And basically the last step for the DCP server is to acknowledge that IP address. And basically th this way they're going to form uh, a relationship between the client and the DSCP server. So let's go, uh, let's go to the switch and start configuring DSCP server now. Okay, here we go uh, back to the switch, and in the switch we're gonna we're gonna head log into the switch, and we are going to create two DSCP uh, pool with the network of the VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. So basically, if you see here, if I had show VLAN brief, I already created two VLANs for you. The VLAN 10, which we call it management, VLAN 20, which uh, in my case is guest, it can be anything for you guys. And if I had show ARP, <coughs> in an ARP table, as you can see, I do have uh, two IP addresses, which is going to be used for routing and, and managing those VLANs. So basically, uh, it's very simple to create the, the DSCP um, uh, server. First, we have to create a DSCP pool. So the command to use on the Cisco switch, it might vary on the different type of switches, whatever you guys have it, but the logic is simple and it's, it's, it's the same. You create a pool on the DSCP server and after that pool, you need to create a, a network for that uh, pool the range of network uh, with an IP addresses and also you have to create a default router that is going to route that traffic for you. So the command to use that is IP DSCP pool and we're going to name this VLAN 10 for the VLAN 10. Then we're going to do network. We're going to do 1066 10.0 space slash 24. You could do space slash 25, I mean 255, 255, 255, 0 or you can use a shortcut for slash 24. 
and after that we're gonna hit default router and in my case the default router for the VLAN 10 is this IP address here and I'm gonna use the 1066.10.1 and hit uh, end so basically we just created a DHCP server for the VLAN 10 the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a VLAN 20 DHCP pool IP DHCP pool VLAN 20 and the network in this case is going to be 1066.20.0 slash 24 and the default router for this DSCP is going to be the VLAN 20 IP address which in this case is 1066.20.1 and hit enter so basically what we did now so run uh, IP DACP pool uh, IP IP DACP oh hold on uh, DACP pool oh I'm sorry include <laughs> IP DACP and as you can see right here we have and as you can see right here automatically the switch excluded the 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 IP routing IP address which is going to be used to route the traffic uh, from VLAN to VLAN and inter, inter VLAN routing so basically this is the exclusion of the IP address so if you want to exclude an IP address let's say we have a server that we don't want that IP address to be released because it's going to create a conflict then what we do is we do IP uh, IP DHCP exclude addresses and we put the uh, let's say in in this case we, we're just going to use a, a random IP address this is a command to exclude the IP addresses from the pool so basically what's going to happen is that uh, DHCP server will not release an IP address 10.66.10.100 and, and, and in this case we're not going to have a conflict in, in any, any, any case so if I hit this enter and I come I come back to the to the command show run include IP DSCP and as you can see now we have another uh, exclusion of the address IP address uh, that is 10.66.10.100 so basically uh, what this is is within the range of of uh, let's say 10.66.10.0 uh, slash 24 so we can have an IP address starting from 1 all the way to the 254 so basically what I'm telling the DHCP server is do not release this IP address so basically if <coughs> if the whole range the whole picture is full like from from uh, in this case from 2 all the way to 99 it will not give the dot hundred IP address it will go 101 all the way to 254 so <coughs> we created we created the DCP server we created the the exclusion of the IP addressing now we have to configure uh, two interfaces which I'm going to use it for the purpose of this video the one is my workstation and in my right side I do have a laptop which I need that laptop to be in a VLAN 20 and I'm going to put my workstation on the VLAN 10 so basically I'm using port uh, uh, 47 and 48 just uh, for the purpose of this video just to show you how we need to configure the interfaces to belong to those VLANs in order to receive an IP address so if I hit show IP interface brief you can see that everything is down of course VLAN <coughs> VLAN uh, 1 10 and 20 the status is up but as you can see the protocol is down because uh, uh, for 10 and 20 I do not have any interfaces uh, that belongs to that the reason you see the protocol for the VLAN 1 is up and the status is up is because the VLAN 1 is a, a default VLAN on every single switch that can be shut down uh, by logging in in a, in a configuration mode and, and hit the shutdown uh, for the interface VLAN 1 but what I'm trying to explain to you is that if you look at the VLAN uh, uh, the interfaces 47 and 48 which I do have a plugged in uh, cable for the laptop and the PC as you can see right now they are administratively down and I'm gonna make sure that the interface number 47 is gonna belong to the VLAN 10 and interface uh, uh, 48 to the VLAN 20 
So let's go ahead and, and, and do the configuration. Okay, interface Gigabyte 1047, and we're gonna make this VLAN to join the VLAN 20. Switchboard, switchboard mode access, switchboard access VLAN 20, no shut. And the next thing that we're gonna do is, inter as you can see, the interface, you're gonna see now, the terminal is gonna tell us that the interface is gonna come up as soon as it, it cleared the, as you can see, it came up. And also what we're gonna see here shortly, we're gonna see the VLAN 20, it's, it's gonna come up because now VLAN 20 has a device, has an interface that belongs to that and that interface is in, 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 in a ready mode to communicate with the other part of the network. And the next thing that we're gonna do is interface gigabyte 1048, uh, and we're gonna do switchboard, switchboard mode access, switchboard access, VLAN, and VLAN 10, no shut, and as you can see, VLAN, interface VLAN, change state to up, and you're gonna see gigabyte 1048 is gonna change state to up, which it did, and we're gonna see the VLAN 10 is gonna change state to up shortly in a moment so while we waited for that just a recap we did configure the DSCP uh, pool we did configure the network we did configure the the, the uh, default route for each of the VLANs we did assign the interfaces for all the VLAN so right now if I hit uh, show as you can see interface VLAN 10 it changed state to up I mean it's, it's a little delay but what are you gonna do so now show IP interface brief, show IP interface brief. You can see that the VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 also, besides the status that before was up, now we have the protocol up as well. And also 47 and 48 interfaces should be up and running. And as you can see here, we do have VLAN, uh, VLAN 20 up, interface 47 up, and interface 48 up, and also VLAN 10 is up. So now, uh, show DCP server, we're gonna see nothing. And right now, I am going to uh, hit the command show ARP to see if anybody receive an IP address. So the ARP table is telling me that I, did, I do have a communication between this device, which is 20.3, and I do have a communication with device 10.2. So 10.2 is my, my computer right here, the one that I'm recording the video. And basically what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna hit show IP config. And as you can see right here, this is, this is the IP address that my computer received from the DHCP server. So remember that DORA process? That's exactly what happened. <coughs> the uh, DSCP uh, gave me an IP address starting dot two. It didn't give me dot one, and it's not going to give me dot one hundred because I did exclude that IP address uh, from the range. So basically, <coughs> this computer right here got an IP address of ten sixty six ten dot two. And let's see uh, the other uh, the other computer, uh, the other which is in my case is a laptop. It did receive an IP address of 1066.20.3. So let's try ahead and ping it from the switch 20.3. And as you can see that I successfully have communication with the laptop from the switch. And basically, I'm going to try to do the same thing with dot two. And as you can see, I do have a proper communication. So the router is working. Inter VLAN is working because this is VLAN 10 and this is VLAN 20. So now. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I all I need to do is just to verify for you guys that uh, that uh, the the laptop it did receive that so I want you guys to see that and basically what's gonna I have two NICs so I need to disable one in order to use the RDP for you guys so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to log in remotely via remote desktop to hit this laptop and, and show you guys that that's the IP address of, uh, of the laptop. So let's try ahead and, and do that. And let me just log in here. Okay. Oh, one more time. 
All right. So as you can see, we are inside the laptop and inside the laptop, bring it back here. This is the laptop and we're gonna hit IP config just to show you guys that this IP address here is received by a DSCP server of the VLAN 20 that we configure it on the switch. So basically if I wanna ping ping right now the the computer, I should be able to hit that. And as you can see, I can hit the computer. I can also hit the gateway of the computer, which is VLAN 10. I can also hit the gateway of my VLAN, which I, I belong to VLAN 20 from the laptop. And and uh, back to the back to the switch. Back to the switch. So basically, uh, let me do it this way for you guys, just so you can see it. And pull up the okay all right so basically uh, we're gonna ping 10.66.10.2 and hit minus T for the continuous pin so this is a laptop here and basically this is my computer here and we're gonna try to ping we're gonna try to ping the laptop from this computer 1066.20.3 hit continuous ping and as you can see we successfully have the communication between two VLANs by receiving a DHCP server from the DHCP server uh, sitting inside the switch so right now if, if I had show up one more time I know that that uh, dot three is it's my laptop because as you can see, this ends, the MAC address of, of this laptop is ending 7370. So if I go to the laptop, if I go to the laptop here and I hit IP config, you can see, you can IP config slash all, you can see that, uh, where did it go? What is that, 7370? okay 7370 okay so this is a laptop and this is the mac address of the laptop and as you can see here it's telling me on on the switch it's telling me this this is the mac address of the laptop and i can verify that by going to the laptop and showing that this is the right mac address this is the ip address that i received from the dscp server and the same thing i can do here on the computer verifying the MAC address as you can see here the the MAC address of uh, of the of the computer is ending 71 EF 71 EF and just scroll up up and shows you that the physical address or the MAC address of the device is this and in 71 EF and I know that the the computer got the IP address of dot two and the laptop got the IP address dot three this is VLAN 20 and this is VLAN 1. So that's it for today and thank you for watching and I see you in the next video.